Good afternoon. Welcome to the International Association of Emergency Managers webinar poster showcase tips for success. Let me just start out by saying that if you have any questions while we're going through the presentation today, please put them into the chat box. And if we don't answer your question during the course of this presentation, we will take time at the end of the presentation to answer uh, all of your questions. This will also be recorded and sent to everybody that registered. Next slide, please. So again, thank you uh, for joining us today. My name is Dwayne Hagelians, and I'm the lead of the Poster Showcase Working Group, and I'm the co-chair of the conference committee. Before we go over uh, and get started with the rest of the format for today, I'd like my colleagues to introduce themselves. Mike? Yes, I'm Mike Gavin, a retired emergency manager and also co-chair of the conference committee. Olivia? Hello, my name is Olivia Galinas. I am a program manager for IAEM. And Julie? Hi, my name is Julie Husk. I am also IAEM staff uh, program manager. All right, thank you, everybody. So here's what to expect from today. Uh, again, everyone should use their chat box to send questions and Olivia will be monitoring those questions throughout the, uh, the presentation today. And then if they're not answered, we'll answer them at the end. Um, again, if you don't see uh, your question answered, uh, please reemphasize it to us so we know what's happening and we can get that answered during the Q&A at the end. Our hope is that uh, for this webinar, we can put all of your minds at ease and try to answer any and all questions you may have about the poster showcase. This is uh, really a low stress event and it's an opportunity to demonstrate and show us and the EM community all the great work that you've been working on. So we're gonna start on the poster showcase page that's on the IEM conference website. Um, so for those of you who want to look at this live, you can go to the link that's on this screenshot. The purpose of the poster showcase presentation is to convey to uh, a large wide audience the significance of the individual's research project, your practices or your general findings to practitioners and scholars in the emergency management community, as well as the general public. The poster showcase is open to students, academics and practitioners. Uh, IEM recognizes much of the work happening across the industry happens at organizational levels. However, and this is very important, the poster showcase is an opportunity to share the work of individuals, uh, not organizations. So we're hoping that you as an individual or as a team are demonstrating what you're doing. Participants chosen to display their posters will receive certificates of participation that documents credit towards the IAEM certification program under professional contribution category F, speaking. As a reminder, the poster showcase call for speakers will open next week on Monday, that's March 22nd, and we encourage all of you to submit. So in the previous slide, we had the screenshot from the website on the poster showcase page. Very quickly, uh, we know you're not gonna read this obviously. Here is the information from the speakers pages. This page shows all the benefits and responsibilities of being a participant in the poster showcase. The poster showcase guidance document is hyperlinked on this page and is a must read for participants. This document has all the requirements for being a participant in the poster showcase. And as we'll explain throughout this presentation, uh, we are here and we're gonna give you our emails so that if you have any questions even after this presentation, you'll be able to answer those for you. So as we go through the remainder of the presentation, you can jot down those questions in the chat box, as I mentioned, and we want to make sure that we answer all of your questions that you have uh, today. And after this webinar, again, we'll give you our contact information. So as questions pop up later on, you can reach out to any of us and we'll be able to provide you with guidance, uh, not just those of us that are on today, but also the rest of the members of our working group for the poster showcase. So. We're here to help and make this a positive experience for you. So keep your pens handy. And as we review the program and the steps to submit a proposal, uh, as these great ideas pop into your head, write them down before they disappear and get ready to present your ideas in a poster for the poster showcase. 
the poster showcase document guidance document uh, which can be found on the speakers page that i mentioned of the conference website has everything in it it has all the dates you need to know the requirements for the abstract submission poster content uh, the on-site logistics when we get to Grand Rapids, presentation information, and details on the evaluation process and receiving your recognition. Between the webinar and the guidance document, we should cover all the usual questions. However, again, we will always be available to you via email to answer questions you may have uh, later after this webinar. So, we have participants competing against the standard rather than each other. We offer both competitive and non-competitive divisions for the poster showcase. Uh, we're excited to see this event continue to grow and expand as we attract participants who are willing to share their research findings, their project outcomes, and ideas with their colleagues and other conference attendees. Uh, the poster showcase has really become a cornerstone for new ideas and networking for our memberships. Over the, the years, we have, um, created new systems in which we have uh, very little um, stress, right? So you can be competitive or non-competitive and you can enter your information and instead of competing against each other, again, we wanna make sure that you understand that you're competing against a rubric so that that way um, it's your work being assessed for your work and your work being shared with all of our attendees. So in our competitive division, our categories are student, which can be an undergraduate or graduate student, academic and practitioner. Participants are competing again against the standard, trying to make this uh, competition completely fair and transparent, which leads to more collaboration and sharing of great concepts and ideas amongst our community. So if you are a student entering the competitive division, uh, we will ask that additional documentation is required when you submit your abstract. Uh, this could be a letter from your academic institution showing enrollment in the 2020-2021 academic calendar year or your schedule of classes. Um, so this will also need to be submitted. If you are unable to provide this document, uh, you will unfortunately not be able to participate in the competitive division as a student, but you can participate as a practitioner if applicable or in the non-competitive division. Suppose you do not want to go through the competition, but you have this great, exciting information to share about your work, your agency, your jurisdiction, your office, your project, uh, your practice, et cetera, right? Something that, that, that has been done that is, is great for the emergency management profession, something that you want to share with, with all of our attendees. So perhaps, you know, you're working in collaboration or a disaster operation, whatever this great thing is that you're doing and you can, or you're working on, you can submit an abstract for it by entering in the non-competitive division. This is an opportunity for you to share with your colleagues. Um, this platform, as a reminder, may not be used as a uh, promotional operation. So if you're, if you're a business, you can't use this non-competitive platform to promote your business. This is really not about products or services. This is about great ideas and emergency management and how we can share them. So if you don't, if you don't wanna go through the whole uh, competitive process of being graded, and you have a great idea, you can still share it in the non-competitive division. Participants will be submitting their proposal online directly to IEM. Here are the instructions to submit to access the speaker portal. As you can see, you do not need to be a member of IEM, nor do you need to already have an account set up with IEM. Detailed instructions and a list of all the required fields for the submission form are also provided in the speaker guidance. All right, you'll need the information listed on this screen in order to complete your submission for the poster showcase. If you look at heading, under that we would like the title of your proposal, name of the presenter, your affiliation, address, phone numbers, and a primary and alternate email address. Participants must indicate 
the selected division. Okay, and that's competitive division. Participants must indicate selected category, student, undergraduate or graduate, academic or practitioner. Non-competitive division, participants must indicate that. The abstract and the title link. We would like the abstracts to be a maximum of 2,000 characters, including spaces. Titles, maximum 150 characters, including spaces. The selection committee reserves the right to edit abstracts if necessary for clarity, grammar, or proper usage. Under the presentation theme, the presentation theme must reflect research, experience, practice, or findings connected to emergency management or related fields. In the list of collaborators, advisors, and departments, we want those names that are assisting with this research. Identifying funding sources, uh, if any, and then identifying the Institutional Review Board proof of regulatory committee approval, if that's required. When we look at developing your poster, this is a screenshot directly from the guidance. Since everyone who's accepted will present a poster to the conference attendees or for the competition, we'll need the following information done in a unified manner. You might be familiar with other poster presentations in their respective formats, but we're different organization and we conduct our PSC a little differently. We're very interested in what you have to share with the emergency management community and what and how you choose to share it also part of the message. Having said this, if this is your first time and you're not sure if you should submit what you should submit, we're available to help you, as Dwayne mentioned, through every step of the process if needed. The left side of this screen is a poster template. Please pay special attention to the header. It's important that all posters have this information at the top of their posters. The IAEM Twitter hashtag, your name, the title of the poster, and the category you are selecting to participate in. It's important that you incorporate all the poster requirements listed in the image on the right as you develop your poster. Citations are very important to us. Someone in our audience may be thinking about developing a poster based on project done at work. Well, your company probably has guidance documents or standards operating procedures that were referenced. You can cite those. Maybe a new document had to be developed or perhaps the reference comes from a planning meeting. Whatever it is, we want to see the source on the posters for the times when a person is not standing in front of the poster um, to answer questions. We wanna make sure that everyone who has research or best practices to share understands that this is a great outlet to show your work product. This is an opportunity to network, showcase, discuss your ideas with other professionals in the emergency management area, which of course could lead to either additional research or perhaps even developing a formal session presentation for future IAEM conferences. It's important to note that research is not a finite occurrence. Research will have questions to answer moving forward. It's important that your poster not only addresses your findings, but what future research may look like, whether for you or possibly for somebody else reviewing your poster. Okay, coaching. After you're selected to present your poster at the IAEM annual conference, you'll have the opportunity to consult with a coach who can provide feedback on your poster development on-site oral presentation skills, or answer questions in relationship to the evaluation guidelines. All you need to do is contact Olivia between June 1st and September 9th of 2021. We want to provide you with the best opportunity, most favorable situation to present yourself and your work. We want to emphasize we are here to help, not dissuade anyone from participating, which is why we go to these links to be helpful and offer coaching if participants want it. 
you'll have plenty of time to incorporate the feedback prior to the conference and printing of the poster. We send it by mail and you can, by email, excuse me, and you can always ask for clarification or more coaching if you need it. We understand and respect how important your poster is to you and any feedback offered is designed to better your content, formatting, or presentation in general. And this should be your work, not your teams or your mentors, colleagues, or professors. We look forward to receiving posters developed for the IAEM conference, reflecting our 2021 theme, IAEM 2021, looking back to look ahead. Poster dimensions need to be three foot in height and four feet in width. There should be a balance of text, images, and white space. The poster should be attention grabbing. And this is Olivia. I will be sending you many reminders of upcoming deadlines um, and next steps as well as on-site logistical instructions as the event draws near, um, including your exact location and placement of your poster. We try and locate the posters near the registration area or the EMAX, which is the exhibit hall, that entrance um, so that your posters are in a high traffic area uh, visible to attendees throughout the conference. And in Grand Rapids, the location is spectacular. It's located in a high traffic area right outside the entrance to the registration exhibit hall and the session rooms. The participants in the competitive division must be, uh, be able to present virtually for the evaluation session between September 20th to 22nd, but your exact time slot is to be determined. Um, all posters must be set up for display by Monday, October 18th at 8 a.m. Eastern, um, and, but all participants in both the competitive and non-competitive divisions must be available by your poster during the uh, poster showcase presentation session, and that is on Tuesday, October 19th during the morning program break uh, so that you can answer any questions from attendees walking through. Keep in mind, it should be readable from a distance of four to six feet, should be free of errors, and posters are expected to be developed specifically for the IAEM conference. Resources and examples for posters can be found in Appendix 1 of the guidance. As we talk about the evaluation criteria, let me remind you the purpose of the poster showcase presentation is to convey to a wide audience the significance of your research project your practice, or general findings to practitioners and scholars in the emergency management community, as well as the public. On the screen is the rubric the evaluators will use. So no surprises, everyone gets assessed with the same rubric by a team of evaluators made up of academics and practitioners. We also build in alternates in case there's a conflict of interest discovered right before the presentation. We want this poster showcase to be the best opportunity for the presenters and the evaluators. So we work diligently to anticipate issues while respecting our colleagues and their professional capacities. Participants in the competitive division must, and I repeat that, must be available online during the evaluation session. A select panel of evaluators will assess the poster showcase video presentations of those electing to be in the competitive division virtually in September prior to the virtual evaluation session. The video presentation should be attention grabbing and encourage questions from the evaluators. For the virtual evaluation session, participants in the competitive division should expect questions concerning research methods used, significance of the content for practicing emergency managers, controversial aspects of the findings, and future direction for research based on the current findings. The evaluation session will last up to 15 minutes for questions from the panel of evaluators.
So here are some important dates uh, for you maybe to jot down. Uh, the first upcoming deadline for you is, well, the call for speakers opens on Monday, the 22nd, but the first deadline for you to submit your abstract is April 23rd at 11.59 p.m. at Central Time. Uh, the next one important date is that we will notify you of selection by June 1st. And then between June 1st and September 9th, uh, you can contact me, Olivia, at iaem.com uh, to request a coach, as mentioned earlier. Uh, the final PDF image of your poster is due to us by September 9th. Um, but all of these are listed in the guidance um, if you don't have time to write them down. We are almost at the end of our webinar. If you have not already put any questions in the chat box, please send them in now and I will review. All right, again, thank you for joining us. While Olivia is reviewing uh, all of your questions in the chat box, uh, I want to let you know we're here to help again. You know, I, can't, I cannot emphasize this enough uh, for all of us, Julie, Olivia, Mike, myself, and all the people in our working group and the conference committee, uh, we're here to help. This has become one of the uh, one of my favorite events at the conference, where we get uh, people to come out and share great new ideas. It becomes a an uh, absolute must in networking. Um, lots of opportunities to network with your peers in the community. Uh, also, opportunities for those students that are looking for for uh, networking and, and future employment. Again, the poster showcase is a great way to to meet practitioners in the field. So please, please, please feel free to reach out to any of us at any time with questions. And again, to reemphasize something that Mike said earlier, uh, if, if we've gone a little fast here, or I've talked too fast, which sometimes I do, remember that all the resources and examples for posters that, that will help guide you are in Appendix 1 of the guidance. And again, we do have uh, coaches, myself and, and several others uh, on our working group will help coach you as you go along with your poster if you decide that you need some coaching and some guidance, even if it's just to ask some questions. So again, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the IEM conference website, as well as sent to all of those of you and others that have registered to attend this webinar. So Olivia, are there any questions out there for us? Yes, I have one. Um, for the non-competitive division, are group posters with multiple authors, but a single presenter allowed? Yes, as long as um, you know, you know, often we know that multiple people work on a poster. We see this all the time in academia, so that's allowed. We, what we're really trying to shy away from is um, three or four people trying to quote unquote present at once, and also we want to make sure that it's individuals and not, i.e., a business or something like that. So that that is allowed. And obviously, we're in the field of collaboration, so collaborating is 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 a good thing. Any other questions? If you have questions, please type them in. Olivia, yeah. while we're waiting, waiting, can we put up the slide with everybody's contact? Yeah, absolutely. So here's my contact uh, information, also Julie and Olivia's, and then Dan Bovich, who is going to be uh, taking over the poster showcase next year and who is helping us this year but could not be here today. There's Dan's contact information. Again, um, even if you forget me and you forget Dan, if you know Olivia or Julie, they can uh, take your questions and they can guide them to us. And that includes myself and Mike and Dan and everybody else that's in our working group. Other questions, Olivia? Nope, we have covered them all. All right, well, I appreciate everybody attending here today. I appreciate your giving up your time. I know that you know probably none of you have been on on you know any webinars or Zoom lately because this is so unique in the modern world. But I appreciate your time. I'll go around the horn. Mike, anything to add? No, uh, thank you for your time and look forward to seeing you in Grand Rapids later this year. Absolutely, Julie. No, uh, thank you everyone again. As Dwayne said, if you have any questions later on, please feel free to reach out to us. And this will be recorded and um, sent to everybody uh, as well as posted on the conference website as soon as it's available. All right, and Olivia. Yes, I reiterate what everyone has said. Uh, thanks for joining and I look forward to any questions anyone has.
thank you very much, everybody. Uh, as Mike said, uh, we are all very, very, very much looking forward to seeing all of you and everybody else in Grand Rapids. Have a great day and thanks for attending.